This video shows how to adjust the code style and code formatting options for CodeRush features that generate and modify code. The purpose of this video is to get you up to speed as quickly as possible so the code CodeRush generates exactly matches your coding style. First, we'll cover code formatting. We'll quickly review Visual Studio's built-in formatting options. We'll talk about CodeRush's optional code format feature, and I'll show you how to automatically format code that CodeRush creates or modifies. Then we'll discuss code style options that go beyond formatting and impact CodeRush features that generate new code, as well as feature-based code generation settings. And finally, we'll take a brief look at CodeRush's code cleanup feature. Visual Studio includes a moderately sophisticated set of code formatting options. These impact code generated by Visual Studio, but can also impact code generated by CodeRush. And by default, this is exactly how it works. CodeRush calls Visual Studio's built-in code formatting functionality after you apply CodeRush features to your code. I'll show you an example of this right now. So right now I'm inside of a class and I'm going to use the M template to create a new method. And after I do that, you can see that the open brace appears on a new line by itself. Let's call this original method. Now let's go inside Visual Studio's options and let's change the option here. So instead of putting the brace on a new line, it puts it at the end of the method declaration. Click OK. And now if I come into my class and I use the same M template again, now you can see that CodeRush and Visual Studio work together to put the open brace at the end of the method declaration line. Notice existing methods in the old format are not changed when CodeRush features are used. Only modified or newly generated code reflects the current code format settings. Now let's go change that style back. And we'll expand that template one more time. And we can see the CodeRush template feature is again respecting the Visual Studio format settings. And you may already be familiar with Visual Studio's shortcut bindings to the document and selection format commands. So that's a quick review of Visual Studio's format options. But what if you need more? CodeRush's code format feature. CodeRush includes a code format feature similar to Visual Studio's. Without diving into meticulous detail, the essential difference between the CodeRush and Visual Studio formatting features is that CodeRush has significantly more code format options. So if you find Visual Studio's formatting options insufficient, you might consider switching over to CodeRush's code format feature. The code format feature is also useful if you regularly need to work with two or more different coding styles inside Visual Studio. For example, you might be a contractor who works with two or more clients using different code styles. Or you might find a particular style of code easier to read, but team rules dictate that your commits have to be in a different code style. If scenarios like these apply to you, then code format may be what you need. Let's take a quick look at the code format options available in CodeRush. Code format options are only visible if you've set your level to advanced or expert. If your level is new user, like mine is here, we'll need to change that. Inside the editor code formatting folder, these seven pages hold all the options you need to format c -sharp code. I won't dive into each of these right now, but I will give you a general sense of what's here. Each page in this folder covers a different category of options. There are settings for blank lines, line breaks, indentation, spacing, and wrapping and alignment. Options are listed in the top pane and grouped by sections. Checking and unchecking individual options will show how the setting impacts formatting in the lower preview pane right here. Notice I've changed the setting here to be the opposite of my setting inside Visual Studio. So that's a brief intro to code format options. Next, let's take a look at how we can apply these settings 
to our code. The easiest way to start using this feature is to tell Code Rush to replace Visual Studio's built-in formatting. To do this, just check this option. Always use Code Rush's Code Format Engine instead of Visual Studio's on the Editor Code Formatting General Options page. So I'll show you how to replace Visual Studio's built-in formatting with Code Rush's Code Format feature. Before we make the change, I just want to remind you that Code Rush features are formatting generated and modified code using Visual Studio's style settings, which, as you recall, are currently set to place opening braces in C Sharp on their own separate lines. We'll expand the M template again to verify that. And moments ago, we changed the Code Rush code formatting settings so that opening braces would appear at the end of the method declaration line. So let's tell Code Rush to use code formatting settings instead. On the code formatting general page, we'll check the Always Use Code Rush's Code Format Engine instead of Visual Studio's checkbox. We'll expand the M template one more time. And now you can see that we're using Code Format feature. And before we did that, we were using Visual Studio's formatting. And so now our code formatting settings are in effect. By making this change to replace Visual Studio's formatting with Code Rush's Code Format Engine, that means that calls to edit.format document invoked via Control E D or Control K D will also be routed through the new format engine. So that's how you replace Visual Studio's format engine with Code Rush's. Next, we'll take a look at additional code style options used by other Code Rush features. Code style. More code generation options. Code Rush also has a group of options pages placed in a folder named Code Style. This allows you to specify default style options for newly generated code. That includes identifier naming style, default scope for new declarations, member section headers, and more. Next, let's take a look at some of these options and how they impact existing Code Rush features. Scope allows you to specify the scope for new declarations. Right now, for example, if I want to create a new method, the default scope is private. In fact, you've seen that every time I've used the M template here to create a new method. But we can change it here to protect it, for example. Click OK and come down in here and use the M template. And now we have a new protected method. And that's just changing the defaults. There were other features, by the way, to allow you to quickly change the scope of a method. Just Alt up and down will cycle through the different visibilities. We'll switch that back to private. Member sections allows you to set the text that will appear before and after each of the specified sections. Some of the templates use the settings on this page. So you can group fields, for example, if you want to, or methods together and place a comment at the top of them. These comments in the Member Sections page will only be added to your code if there are already no other methods or fields or properties declared in the class, depending on which one of these we're going to use. So I'll demonstrate this right now using the uh, PS template, which generates a new property of type string. And I'm going to create this in a new class. So I'll type in C to create the new class. And I'll come in here and I'll type in PS for property of type string. And we'll call this, for example, uh, name, like that. And notice it created this field section up here at the top. If I were to come down here and use the PI property to create a property of type integer, call this years, for example, notice that it put the field up with the other field right up here at the top, even though I expanded the template down here. So that's what's happening with the member sections page.
The identifiers page allows you to specify the style for your identifiers, for your fields, parameters, and local variables. So for example, if I want to have a prefix in front of my fields, I might specify my prefix like that. And if I want to start my field with an uppercase letter, I'll choose Pascal case, and there it is right there. By the way, these settings are language dependent. You can choose what language you want to work with and specify those settings for that language. We'll click OK. Notice already in the past when I've created these two properties, my field variables were using that style. Now I'm going to come down in here and I'll create one more property. We'll have a property of type Boolean and we'll call this uh, started like that. And now notice what it did for me with the backing store. It generated the backing store using that new style for the identifiers like that. I'll change that back. Type declarations. Type declarations allow us to choose where we want to declare new classes. Do we want them declared in a separate file or in the same file but above where I am or in the same file or below where I am? So for example, let's change this to put new classes in the same file. We'll take this code. I'm going to just select, I'll just select it and delete it. And then down here, we'll take these sample methods and also clean these up. I'll get rid of those. And now we've got some code here that doesn't compile yet because I don't have a class named rocket ship declared. Let's fix that. We'll hit the code rush key and we'll choose declare class. And now it's built and created the new class for me in the same file, but down below where I am. And I'll change that back. And there are other pages here too. The code behind scope page allows you to specify the default scopes for generated members in code behind files. The formatting page allows you to suppress formatting for individual code rush features if you like. Method references lets you specify how to pass methods as parameters to other methods. Organization lets you enable or disable the member sections options and specify where you want to put namespace references. And the programming style page lets you specify your preference for implicit locals and built-in types. Code cleanup. CodeRush includes a feature called Code Cleanup. And the Code Cleanup page allows you to specify the rules associated with cleanup and the order in which those rules will be applied. So, for example, we have a rule that converts empty quotes to a string.empty call. We have a rule that removes redundant base qualifier calls. We have a rule that removes unused variables that removes unused namespace references, that makes local variable declarations implicit. And we can make properties auto-implemented if they qualify for that rule. So I've got two files here that are essentially identical. The only difference, this file contains a class called Code Cleanup Original, whereas this one contains a class called Code Cleanup. Aside from that, both of these files are identical. In fact, you can see that CodeRush's duplicate code detection has already spotted that there is duplication in these two files. So we'll work over here with Code Cleanup, and we'll just make the file active, come up here, click the Clean Up Active File button, and you can see the changes that are made. We can compare the two. One of the options, by the way, on this page is to also format the code. So we'll use code formatting here when we clean up that file. So the cleanup gets rid of the unused using statements. It formats my file. So now I have uh, leading open braces at the end of my namespace class and method declarations. Let's see what else has changed. Notice at the very beginning here, we have our static variable is still here, but our messages variable has disappeared. Messages was used in this property, but that property was changed to auto implemented. 
which means we didn't need the backing store, and we removed it. Notice another change right here. Here's the empty quotes. Now it's replaced with string.empty. And the biggest changes occurred in this method, compare, which has now become this. What happened? Well, CodeRush spotted this, which means this code isn't needed, which also means these two variables, which were only used down here, are also not needed. And so we can see that we have a significant amount of cleanup here. And then the last change made is we got rid of the call to base here to the method default clean because default clean is only declared in the base class and that's it. So there's no need to specify that. And that's it. I hope this has given you a good introduction to the code format feature, the code style options, and code cleanup.